Welcome to South Florida Saltwater Fishing. I'm Heath and it's Tips and Tricks Thursday. Have you ever wanted to go out and go trolling for king mackerel, also known as kingfish, but you were undecided of what lure to use, or you didn't even know where to begin in the lure selection process? Well, in this Tips and Tricks episode, I'm gonna go over what I believe, based on my experiences, to be the best lures to catch kingfish. Before we get into this though, if you want to learn more about fishing, grow as an angler, or just see some great and exciting offshore fishing adventures, you can start by hitting the subscribe button. Don't forget to turn on the notification bell so that you won't miss a thing. Alright folks, so like I said, we're going over what I believe to be the best lures to get into the bite with the king mackerel. This is all based on personal experience. And again, I do not claim to know everything, but I'm going to pass on the knowledge that I have learned through my successes. So let's get into this. First on the list of my favorite lures to go after King Mackerel for is this, a white bucktail jig. This is one of my favorite go-to lures for catching anything in the ocean, especially King Mackerel. All right, so you might say a bucktail jig. Yes, a bucktail jig. I catch lots of kingfish on these things. So when I'm trolling the bucktail jig, I like to use lighter gear, snapper spinners, 12 to 20 pound class, light stuff. Now you can always rig these with both a little trace of wire leader or personally me, I like to just use fluorocarbon. Now I know it's a calculated risk trolling with monofilament or fluorocarbon, but speaking from experience, the cutoff ratio to boating the fish ratio, I catch way more than I lose lures. Now, when I'm trolling the bucktail jigs, you gotta watch my speed. This is a smaller lure, so you wanna do between four and six knots. You gotta remember what happens the faster you go, the smaller the profile of this lure becomes. So if you're zooming around at you know eight, nine knots, this lure becomes very small and it looks like just a speck traveling through the water and it might reduce your hookup ratio. One thing I want to point out is, is this is what a bucktail jig looks like when it's brand new. This is what it looks like when it's been hit by kingfish and everything else. So they're very resilient lures, yet they will wear down over time after getting hit. And so that's the bucktail jig. And like I've always said, if I had one lure and one lure only to fish with for the rest of my life, this would be it. And next on the list of great lures for kingfish is a drone spoon. This is a three and a half inch drone spoon and I've got it rigged up with about 12 inches of number four 40 pound wire leader. So drone spoons are great for trolling for kingfish. They will get you into the bite with these toothy critters. You're gonna to wanna to troll them at between six and eight knots. Drone spoons work best when on a planer. However, you can troll them up on top. But if you're asking me personally, you will increase your hookup ratio and get more into the bite. If you've got them down deep in the water column, they act better, sort of acting erratic and spinning, which is what a spoon does, down deep. And another great aspect of using a drone spoon is that it's bait free. It's clean. You drop it in the water, you let your line out, you get underway, you're good to go. You get into the hookup. You get the fish on board, you throw them in the cooler, and you're still baitless. The issue with trolling drone spoons is, is they will create line twists if you do not have them hooked up to some sort of terminal tackle swivel that allows them to spin and won't spin your line, thus creating the line twist. You can take drone spoons over the shallow and deep ledges of the reef, hunting down these green water predators. They're a very trustworthy lure when going for king mackerel. And that's the drone spoon for you. One of the great tools of the trade used worldwide for getting into the bite with the kings. And the next one I want to go over, which is another one of my favorites, is the white trolling feather. This particular one happens to be a two ounce trolling feather from the company No Alibi. White trolling feathers most definitely catch kings and they catch a lot of them. If you've ever been skeptical about using these, let me put that mistrust to rest. These catch a lot of kingfish. The best way to troll with these is on a planer and you're gonna hook up a bonita strip on some double tandem hook setup. You're gonna troll this between six and eight knots down on a planer and you will find kingfish for you. Remember, six to eight knots is not very fast. You're trolling. 
Trolling is explained as the pursuit of actively hunting fish. You want fish to act on the instinct to feed, which is why you want to go a little bit fast. Can't stress enough that speed is key when it comes to trolling and getting you into the bite. If you're going too slow, you're giving fish the opportunity to come up, examine the bait, and find the sketchy factor with it. If you're going a little bit faster, they act on the impulse to feed and they strike immediately because of the opportunity presented. And now don't get it wrong, you can also troll these up on top with lighter gear, you know, 15 to 30 pound class. So when I rig up a white trolling feather, what I like to do is give it about 12 to 16 inches of number four 40 pound wire leader and I'll rig it up with a double hook tandem setup because I like to troll these on a planer, like I said, with a bonita strip. That's one of the most effective ways to get into the bite with the white trolling feather. If you're trolling it with wire leader on a planer, you can always tie a haywire twist at the end of it, hook it onto a swivel, the end of your leader, dunk it in the water, get it going. If you're trolling it up top, you can always use it as a dedicated line and have it hooked straight onto your main line with, you know, a swivelless connection just like this. And again, trolling feathers have this natural fabric feather at the back of it, so they're gonna get chewed up. They are resilient lures, but you're gonna have to switch it up every once in a while. This is a new one, and this is one that's been a little chewed up by the Kings over, you know, several trips. As you can see, it's uh, missing an eyeball on one side, and the feathers are getting worn down. But I'm still gonna troll with this one because it's still got some, you know, a little bit of meat behind it, and it still attracts fish. And that's the white trolling feather. A super effective tool to trade, and it's one of my favorites to deploy when I'm going after King Mackerel. And finally, I want to go over what I consider to be the most effective lures for getting into the bite with kingfish. They are strip bait lures. These things you custom make yourself. They're a combination of a couple of things like a trolling squid or a skirt and a sea witch, whether it's fabric, whether it's mylar. Strip bait lures are the most effective tools you can use. Planer trolling to get into the bite with kingfish. These things have all sorts of compositions. The possibilities are endless. Like this one here, I've got a Mylar Sea Witch and a trailing lure that is a Billy Bait Turbo Slammer with some crystal colored Mylar. And again, it's hooked up with double hook tandem setup so that I can hook on a Bonita Strip. And I got about 16 inches of wire on it. You can also go with the fabric sea witch, like a blue and white one, and a trolling skirt, like a dolphin colored trolling skirt, and again, a couple of tandem hook setups on there. You can also go with the same, you know, a trolling skirt, this one's pink, and I got a pink mylar sea witch on top of it. Same thing, wire leader, double hooks. These are made to hook up bonita strips or whatever strip bait you want behind it. That's why it's called a strip bait lure. And then we've got another one of my favorites, which is a smaller profile, but just as effective. This one I got a green sea witch as my front lure, and my trailer lure is a little dolphin colored squirt squid, a little four and a half inch lure. And again, the double 5-0 tandem hook setup. Now you gotta consider something. When you've got a larger lure, you wanna go with larger hooks like 8 -0s. The smaller lures, you Tone it down, get five O's. You might want to also consider the size of the Bonita strip that you're using too. It should be topical. You don't want a giant Bonita strip hanging down to here on a little lure like this, especially when your hooks are up here. Make your Bonita strip hang out about five, maybe six inches past the hooks. The fish will come and nab the tail end of it, which is disabling the prey. And you're good to go. You get in that hookup. And then I've got this one which is another one of my favorites. I also take this one out for Wahoo. This one I use on overcast days. Now I know it might be odd to hear, oh, you go with a bright color on overcast days. Aren't you supposed to match the color of the water and the color of the sky? Yes and no. I have had lots of luck with this setup on overcast days. What it is is the pink Mylar Sea Witch trailed by pink, yellow, and white trolling squid. So yes, strip bait lures, the most effective way to get into the bite personally, if you're asking me. You're going to want to planer troll them. Yes, you can troll them on top, but they're not that effective. They act a 
appropriately and have way better hookup ratio down in that water column. You can use number six planers for them and get down about 50 to 60 feet when troll at six to eight knots. Or you can use size three planers and get down about 20 to 30 feet. And I say six to eight knots. You want to troll fast. Like I said, we're trolling. You're enticing that impulse to feed because of the opportunity presented. Don't ever forget that when you're trolling. Without a doubt, like I said, the most effective tool of the trade when going for kingfish is the strip bait lures. All right, and now one very important key to remember is, is that we are trolling for king mackerel. These fish have teeth that are sharp as razors and a biting force to sever bone of bait fish. So that being said, it's probably a wise choice to go with a trace wire leader. When I say a trace, I mean something small, 12 to 16 inches. You're going to want to learn to tie a haywire twist onto your hooks. You're also going to want to learn to tie a haywire twist onto the free end that will hook to your main line on a swivel or do a swivelless attachment using an Albright knot. They make these little tools from the company Dubro. They're called a haywire easy twist tool. I recommend learning how to use one, get comfortable with it so that your haywire twists don't slip and kink at the very end and your fish gets away right at the boat. It's a super effective tool. Once you learn how to use it, it becomes second nature and you won't stop using it. You'll feel more comfortable with your knotted wire because of this. Okay, so those are my top four favorite types of lures to troll for king mackerel. Again, king mackerel are what's known as a green water fish. So when you hear me referencing, you're gonna troll over the ledges of the reefs that's what you're going to want to do because that's where the green water lies. The area where I go for king mackerel most is in between 90 and 150 feet. That's where I found they hang out the most. Now granted, I've caught them way out in 500 feet of water and I just chalked it up to it being a fluke. But more often than not, they're over those reef sledges hunting down and foraging on the bait fish that hide and seek shelter over the reef. All right, folks, that about does it for this episode. Hope you had fun. Hope you enjoyed. Now, I hope you learned a little bit about what I consider to be the best lures for getting into the bite with kingfish. Till next time, South Florida saltwater fishing, going wherever the cool wind takes us.